In this video, guys, we're gonna look at how to use the tick index when we're day trading US indices. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. So I'm a super big fan of the tick index when day trading the US indices. So NASDAQ, YMSP 500, all this kind of stuff, maybe some of the bigger stocks as well for timing those. It's a super useful indicator. We're gonna hit the chart in a moment. We're gonna have a look at some examples today. Today was a really active day and when the tick comes into its own. Now, some days it's very, very quiet and not that useful, but days like today, if you can understand how it moves and how a tick index works, it's super popular. Now I've done videos about this before, talked about some of the strategies with the tick index, but I just wanna kind of show you in real, not real time, but as it's happened today, some of the benefits of using it. So tick index, very, very briefly, guys, is number of stocks trading on an uptick minus the number of stocks trading on a down tick, uh, NYSE. So you, it's basically a number that's sum of the number of stocks trading up minus the number trading down. If it's positive, you can under expect that there's a lot of buying coming in and people are buying on the offer. If it's negative, there's a lot of selling coming in, people are selling on the bid. But regardless of that, let's hit the screens now and let's have a look and see uh, what it's all about. Okay guys, so I've got in front of me here a uh, tick index and I've got uh, Dow here and I've got S&P 500 here. Uh, what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna switch that to the Qs just so we can kind of see what's happening in three days. Five minute chart on the Dow, uh, sorry, five minute chart on the Qs, five minute charts on the S&P 500, one minute chart on the tick index. So pretty busy day, you can see outside day, started at highs, gone to lows, bouncing up a little bit. But what I want to talk about is here, what have I got on my chart here? I've got a thousand ticks plus on the plus side with an alert set, a thousand ticks the minus side with an alert set. And I've got some brackets here. I've got 400 to the upside and minus 500 to the downside. And I've got a zero line. I've also got a moving average here, which is a 15 setting. So it's a bit busy. And I've only recently put these plus 400 and minus 500s on. Because if you can see, it's been bracketing the moves quite a lot, especially yesterday, when kind of every high peak we had in ticks ended about plus 400. And it seems to be minus 500 to the downside, just because a little bit more urgency to the downside for people. Anyway. Without going on about this, the usefulness of the ticks is this, guys. When you get tick extremes, you want to be fading those extremes as a rule. So when we had that th minus a thousand ticks, great place to, especially when you get a thousand. You get a thousand, that's a really good place to start fading things. Now, it's up to you, but I don't hang around. I like to scalp some out, maybe trail some, because it doesn't necessarily mean the low of the day, and it often does, but sometimes it's just a low and it's just a very oversold condition on a short-term basis. So you have the minus 1,000 ticks, you've got to learn the SPY, you've got to low in the Qs. And obviously the SPY is the best one to trade because it's more uh, more or in tune with the tick index coming from the NYSE. Uh, and then you've got a situation where once the ticks return to zero and above zero after being extreme, you sometimes get another opportunity to hit it on the sell side. So let's put this on a one minute chart um, just so we can show this to you guys. So here we go. So you have a pull back up to zero here. So just got above zero ticks there are plus 200 after the minus 1000 extreme rolling back over. That's an opportunity then to hit it again for a scalp short. Again, we're not kind of looking for long-term trades on this, but it is there. And it's the same when we start to, uh, we start to kind of wind up in the moving average. So as the moving average starts to get very low like this, very rare it gets kind of down here. Normally minus 300 has been a turning point when the 15 period moving average has got to minus 300. That tends to indicate you might be looking for rotation back up. You can see here, we're kind of minus 300. Forget about the early tick readings, they're generally inaccurate. Comes down to here about minus 300 in the moving average, starts to be the level we start to find a few buyers. Um, it just It's just a kind of interesting way of, of viewing things, I think. So you've got the extreme move to fade, you've got the pullback on ticks, sometimes to zero, sometimes not quite to zero. And then under normal conditions, you're kind of fading the extremes that have been set by previous days. So in this instance, plus 400, minus 500, got a tick extreme here, uh, sort of a place to look to fade, a, co a bit of confluence there with the VWAP to be fair. I didn't take any of these, by the way. I've taken some stuff later on, but just showing you, pointing out uh, for illustration purposes. A little low here, minus 500, happened to be the low. A little bit of a scalp there. And again, plus 400 here. Yes, a little bit of heat, but really was the time it started to roll again. 
Um, and again, you can see the extremes coming in on these low readings in ticks. So it's not a perfect tool by any means, nothing is, uh, but I think it's interesting. So guys, that was the Tick Index. Very quick overview of the Tick Index using today as a bit of an example, I'm doing yesterday as well, how those extremes can pinpoint those turning points. At the very least, it's useful to stop you chasing things. It was a high tick reading, probably wants to wait. It doesn't necessarily need to high the day, but on a short term basis, probably wants to wait for a little bit of unwinding before you get involved in it. Probably, again, entirely up to you how you use it, if at all. And if it's something that you find is too much noise, completely understand, don't use it. But it's there, I use it, something I've used it for over a decade now. I think it's a great tool, very handy if you're day trading or scalping the US indices via futures or via a spread bet. Take care, keep this manager, whatever you're doing, bye-bye.